I listen, it's never fun when somebody gets fired, certainly. You never want to, uh, you know, you don't want to see that happen to anybody. But it's big business. They're well compensated, so it's not like they're scrounging to make rent. Uh, but there's certainly a sensitivity to, or mortgage, there's certainly a sensitivity to upheaval and change. We all get that. Uh, so th- nobody wants to see people get fired. Having said that, the Jets absolutely had to move on from LaFleur. They did. I give him credit there. L- let me tell you what has to happen now, all right? And I am worried that this will not happen. But what must happen is that this absolutely must be a Joe Douglas special. I don't want input from Robert Sala. I don't want Robert Sala having any juice on this. What has to happen is this. All right, Joe Douglas identifies the the the, the people who he wants to talk to, people that he targets, whomever he hires, right? You basically say, here's the key, there's the offense, go fix it, Sala, you work the other parts of the building. Because the next person that comes in here to be the offensive coordinator for the Jets must be the kind of person, and this is why Salah can't be in on this decision, (laughs) who could ascend, if necessary, to the head coach position. Well, it's interesting you put it that way because it seems like the most successful new regimes do that. They do something like that. Brian Dable... Offensive coordinator, offensive mind, he goes and fortunately is able to hire Wayne Martindale, who's now getting head coaching inquiries because of how good the Giants' defense has been, particularly in the in the red zone and um, how aggressive he is. He's made his name for himself. Brian Dable doesn't have to worry about the New York Giants' defense. Obviously, he has purview over it, but he doesn't have to worry about it. You see it, um, you know, in other places in the league. You go back, I'm thinking back to Chuck Pagano, my buddy Bruce Arians, or at least our buddy Bruce. I've known him forever, literally since the day I was born. Mm-hmm. You've known him because he's been on the show so many times. Bruce Arians gets hired in Indianapolis. Chuck Pagano doesn't have to worry about the offense. And then Bruce Arians did the same thing when he went down to Tampa Bay. He hires Todd Bowles, who's been, you know, a less than stellar head coach, but he's a hell of a defensive coordinator. Bruce Arians doesn't have to worry about the defensive side of the equation. And so for the New York Jets, you're right, BT, and I would put it, you know, somewhat differently, same 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 idea, but the Jets and their hiring of their next offensive coordinator need to hire their next head coach. Right? They have to hire somebody who could be a head coach because that's what the best teams do, right? It's 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 there's, there's certain head coaches that kind of just sit right in the middle and they're great delegators of power. We saw this with um, with the, the Seattle Seahawks and, and Carroll out there, how he just he never felt like he was offensive-minded or defensive-minded. He's kind of just sat right there. Bill Belichick, even John though... John Harbaugh, special teams guy. John Harbaugh is the same way. Like yep. There's certain guys that just sit right in the middle and, and they're great motivators of men. They empower their coordinators and it feels like... All right, they they can get it right no matter what happens. With Robert Sala, he's clearly a defensive minded coach. He, um, you know, was really good at that out in San Francisco. But I, you can't trust his offensive acumen to make the right decision on the offensive side of the ball. So he's got to hire that guy who's the who is not the head coach but could be the head coach, and that's threatening. By the way, yeah, I get it. That, well, that's too bad. Um, that you know, you've had two years on the job. Your team lost seven of eight games to finish the season. You lost six straight. Didn't score a touchdown seemingly since uh, the first night of Hanukkah. I don't really care. <laughs> I don't care about that. That's tough, you know. And, and what the Jets and uh, I, I think, I think that they'll be able to do this, but they need to divorce themselves from preconceived notions about Zach. And let me explain. The Jets cannot go into this situation. When I say the Jets, I mean Joe Douglas. Again, Mm -hmm. this needs to be a Joe Douglas special. They can't go in here, and Woody can't meddle and say, all right, you know, we don't really know if Zach is that good, but, geez, we drafted him second. We got to try to get something out of it. If whomever they target... If that person, and it's got to be a veteran, and it's got to be somebody with a real tangible resume, all right? some Somebody of accomplishment already, not theoretical accomplishment down the road. If that person tells them to, to their face, hey, I like your offensive weapons. I love the New York, New Jersey area. I love the facility. I think the AFC East is, is winnable for, you know, I know the Bills are tough, but winnable for a long time. We can do something here. But I can't win with that kid. And if they don't allow 
the offensive coordinator to have juice, then they are destined to fail forever. No, you're right about they that. They can't, and, and they can't shove Zach Wilson down his throat. Well, we we know where unless he likes I Zach. Said, Zach is is interesting because I, I don't want to put him in this category yet, but he's becoming that, and you know, he's he's trending towards bust. But it's almost like he's a sunk cost. Like you can't worry about it. Right. Oh, well, we drafted him number two, to your point. We drafted him number two in, you know, twenty twenty one. We 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 gotta be committed to it. At this point, it's almost like that doesn't matter anymore because we we know what his what he looks like and what you know who he's become. So whoever they hire now as the offensive coordinator has to look at Zach Wilson as potentially a piece, but not definitely the piece. But you also got to try to fix him, right? You can't you can't divorce yourself fully from Zach. But if you end up getting here and a month in or whatever it may be, you just like this kid just doesn't have it. Yep, it's a sunk cost. But here's the you one: you can't thing, worry about it. You know, I, I I'm pretty much with you um, because the allocation of money it, it is what it is. Yeah, I almost fear that the Jets will be so consumed, or at least they have in years past. Maybe I need to give them a little more credit here. Uh, that they'll be so worried about how they're perceived. Not so much about the money, but, uh, you know, second overall pick. Geez, not even yeah. about the money. Just about the way people view their inability to get it right but with you, such a premium draft spot. Yeah, but You can't you, worry about that at this no, point, but I feared that they might. Well, of course. I mean, that, well, well, that impacts how we're going to evaluate Joe Douglas, right? It's just That's just on his resume. Yeah, it's, it's it, there. It is what it is. There's nothing you can do about it. Mm-hmm. So either Zach's going to figure it out and become really good or average or whatever, or he's going to be a bust, and and it's going to really affect Joe and Douglas. And you pivot, and you make us forget about Zach Wilson. Oh, you hope so. Well, that, that's another option the, the for, question, for the question, Joe. The question is, does Joe survive it? So, I mean, at huh. the end of the day, they have they had to make this decision with Mike LaFleur, like the headline. They had, they had to move on from Mike LaFleur. Yes. How they did it is... Is interesting, but they had to. Michael Floor is no longer the offensive coordinator for the New York Jets. Great. The biggest thing going forward, I think, for the Jets is that they have to find an offensive coordinator, a veteran, who basically could be your head coach and and puts Robert Sala, if he's going to hold on to his job, in a position not to have to think about, micromanage, be worried about what's happening on the offensive side of the football. If they don't find that guy, the same cycle is going to keep repeating and repeating and repeating. Now, the other part of this job is to try to fix Zach Wilson. But that's the, that to me, that's less important right now. It is finding the guy who you truly don't have to worry about being competent at his job. And this is where the Jets need to be competent at their job <laughs> and when they too often are not. They need to get this one right because if it's the right move, it can fix almost everything. Now, we'll get into the is it an appealing job? Uh, more about Zach. Will there be interference from Woody? Should Salah have any input? You know, all, all the things. There, there are many layers to this for sure, but they can't mess this up. It is non negotiable. This is not about, well, this is a, you know, an ascending hot young uh, court. No, no way. No way. When we look here, I want gray hair. I'll take no hair. You know, because usually, well, you know, usually you have no hair, you're getting older. You know, you're not bald when you're 20 unless you really got the short end of the stick. I can't have a young kid running this offense. I want age. I want wrinkles. You know, I want gray hair. I want a lack of hair. I want to put the Jets on next year, and whether he's on the field, and hopefully he's on the field, that will be nice, or up in the booth, I want to see an old guy. (laughs) 877-337-6666. Tiki and Tierney here on The Fan. Inside of our Town Fair Tire Studio, our friends at Town Fair remind you that you always get the guarantee lowest price. Of course, uh, from Connecticut to Maine, nobody beats Town Fair Tire, nobody. And let's just be honest as well for a moment. Even the way it went down yesterday, so Jetsian. Mm-hmm. Oh, LaFleur fired. No, he's not. Mm, <laughs> yes, he is. You know, and not even fired when it's all said and done. Yeah. Just kind of allowed to pursue other opportunities. What the hell does that mean? Now, listen, he is young, and there's evidence that it worked with Mike White in, you know, in Spurs, and even Flacco looked better. Hell, Josh Johnson, we've been through this a million times. I'm not saying LaFleur is worthless. He's a young, fertile football mind. He's got some contacts around the league. He's going to land on his feet, and he's been well compensated. Yeah. But do not tell me that people were knocking down the Jets' door in Florida Park. Uh, hello, we have to talk 
talk to LaFleur. Well, what's so appealing? Was it the lack of touchdowns in the last month? Sure, you could talk to him. This was about saving face. And this is what worries me about the Jets. It's never done with the best interest of the franchise moving forward. It's always a little scattered. Yeah. Like, well, it's Salah's boy, and, and I don't want to run him over with a with a Mack truck, so maybe we, and this is just my theory, I can't prove this, maybe we put it out there perceptually. People were maybe interested in LaFleur. Here's a soft landing, so we'll mutually part. No, the guy should have been fired. Yeah, well, I mean, obviously. And the nuance of that is is interesting for sure. But what's most important is who comes next. Now, this is going to be a drawn-out process. It's not going to happen overnight. Uh, we all know that the offensive and defensive coordinators, along with the head coaches and general managers, are subject to the Rooney Rule. And there's probably a lot of uh, minority candidates that are still playing, at least the better ones, that are still uh, playing. It's in, it's unlikely that you're going to get a parallel move, meaning an offensive coordinator from another team coming to the New York Jets. So that's why you have to look for the pass game coordinators, the quarterback coaches, some of those that are veteran in that realm. Those are the guys that the Jets will likely target uh, early. But this process is going to go on for a little bit. You got to believe that. now. And, and I, I'm okay with that if I'm a Jets fan because mm. you have to get this right. Oh, yeah. This can't, I don't need this can't just be like... Well, I know this guy, and I think he'll be okay. Yeah, let's 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 hire that guy. But let me ask you a question, and I'm totally with you on that. If it takes a month and a, I don't care, just get the right guy. If it's Bevel, all right, who obviously has a three year tie with with Sala, mm -hmm. and Bevel's been an OC for 16 years. There's a lot of good things on that resume. Yeah. So Bevel is a very qualified candidate, and you know that he's going to be in the mix. But if it's Bevel, and it's Bevel fast. Isn't that a bit of a warning flare that Robert Sala had a lot of say in this? Yes. And that's not a good thing. Yes, it is. It is. But, I mean, ultimately, Robert Sala is going to have some say because no, he, he is on his staff. But he shouldn't, though. Uh, but you, you got to respect the head coach. Well, I'm not saying you disrespect. Yeah. I'm certainly not trying to say that. But, but it's the, it's the uh, one. It's the it's the relationship that you know that he has because of their previous stint together in some capacity. I don't know exactly what. Robert Sala was doing in Seattle when Daryl Bevel was the offensive coordinator out there. They won a Super Bowl, but I, I don't I don't know what the relationship was. But it is the I one think it was quality control for a little bit out there in yeah, Seattle. Yeah, so so I don't know if he was yeah, offense yeah, or deep, like what was he, what was he doing? Mm -hmm. um, but there is a relationship there that matters yeah. obviously when you're trying to hire coaches. All right, let's uh, let's hear from you guys. This should be interesting. Eight seven seven three three seven sixty six sixty six. Tiki and Tierney on the fan. Uh, let's start with Danny out in Randolph on uh, the fan. Danny, what's going on, buddy? What's up, BT? Um, you know, <laughs> I just want to say one thing. I'm with you on one, a guy with gray hair that's been, you know, an OC. You know, I don't want an up-and-coming guy. I, I totally agree with you on that. I want wrinkles, but too. I want, I want wrinkles. I want, <laughs> yeah, I want the, the sick 1980s glasses and all that. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. What I don't, but what I don't want is is a forced marriage by the GM. We, you know, all the examples you guys are giving, you're, you're leaving one thing out. Every one of these guys have amazing quarterbacks, and that makes a coach look great. We just had Adam Gase in a forced marriage with, uh, you know, Williams, right? Mm -hmm. And I think what you're creating there when you go, look, Douglas is going to hire the, uh, the offensive coordinator who could be a head coach, you're going to have a fractured locker room, Offense versus defense now as a fracture locker room. Sal is going to have to be answering because he's on the hot seat about, you know, he's looking over his shoulder. And you're just going to create like a toxic environment. Yeah. You know, take a look Take a look at Bill Belichick. So right? what would you do? Dan, what are you, I, Dan, you make good points. Yeah. Out of, so what would you do? How would you handle yeah. it differently? Go ahead. You know, I, I personally, I thought you brought up a good point. Like, I, I think Devil, you know, somebody who's established that maybe has ties with Salah, would be a good thing. I mean, the Jets are in a tricky position because there's kind of like this playoff mandate. So, like, what good coordinator is going to want to take it? I maybe would have ran it back with LaFleur and just fired them all after year three. But <laughs> I agree. Not, yeah, but then, then you got to suffer for another year. Look, LaFleur could not. Part, I mean, part of Mike LaFleur's thing, job. Please. Whether or not you believed he did a good job as a coordinator when Zach Wilson wasn't in the football game, part of his job was to develop the quarterback, and he failed spectacularly at developing it. In fact, he 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 admitted it, and just like Adam Gase admitted that he let down Sam Darnold. So when you when you admit it, you're basically saying fire me. And I, I, I don't. 
Mike LaFour should be running away from this Jets situation as fast as well, he possibly he can. And he, he is. is. And he, you're right. He'll land somewhere. He's got a lot of relationships. Even if he goes and sits on his brother's staff in Green Bay, there's, 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 he'll be fine. Yeah. Don't, so don't cry for Mike LaFleur. But the biggest issue right now going forward for the Jets is that they, they have to stop the noise. They have to stop the doubt. They have to stop the question marks that are lingering over this offense. And the only way that Joe Douglas and Robert Sala are going to get that done is that they hire somebody who in your mind you say, I don't have to think about him. I know he's going to be very good. And I have little umbrage with the, point, with the point that he made about these guys have, these teams have great quarterbacks. How do you know when a young kid is going to be a great quarterback? You have no idea unless he's put in the right environment to thrive at what he does best. And Zach Wilson was not put in that environment. He was not taught well in that environment. And as a result, he's sitting in Bustville. But two years ago, and a year ago, actually, Tua Tungavailoa was a bust. Now, I'm worried about Tua's ability to ever play again because he had three concussions this past season. That we know about. But a year ago, he was a bust. This year, for a lot of the season, he was an MVP candidate. So, so much matters who's in place. Mike McDaniel comes in. He brings in Daryl Bevel as his pass game coordinator uh, and and uh, and quarterback coach. And look where Tua went. It matters who you surround that talent around. You can't just you can't just judge the kid. You got to judge the situation that he's in. I do understand where if you say that, you know what, because it's now kind of complex, and this has been my worry from day one, Mm -hmm. knowing or strongly surmising that the Jets will be making this move in terms of the OC, is that you are now asking somebody, because the requirement is an established, uh, accomplished veteran OC to come in and take this job, right? And you're asking that person to come here with the head coach firmly on the hot seat going into year three, which is about as undesirable a situation that you could possibly have as a coach. I mean, I... But Let's there's take, only 32 of them. I understood. But take Daryl Bevel. Take take Bevel for one second. I think he's 54, 55. I'm sure he's got a family living down in Miami. He's bounced around a little bit. He's mm-hmm. been an OC for 16 years. I get that. But are you going to be in such a rush, even if you like the Jets roster, to move up here, right, if you don't know that the head coach is going to be back for the 2024 season? Well, I mean. I, I, that, that is, that is a yeah, definite true. logistical but, issue. But they're used to this. So then These, when people do say, I'm sorry, but when people say, Maybe it's best to clean house entirely. Yeah, of course. I do understand that. Too. I, now, I, Sala does not deserve to be fired. No. He deserves to be on the hot seat. Yeah. But, and, he, and he's earned barely a third year. But I do understand that thought process where one swooping clean out, one desirable head coach, staff up from there and start over. That does make some sense. Yeah, but I don't think that it feels like that's the solution. No, no, it's not going to happen. But I can see why people would say that that could be a cleaner transition. You know what I mean, Teak? I do. Okay. I do. (laughs) Very formal. I do. I do. All right. Do you? 877-337-6666. Hoff and Dover in the house. We good? We get a thumbs up from Hoffy. Dover, you good, buddy? You feel nice. Thumbs up from him as well. Uh, obviously, we'll get to the Giants later. Teak and Carl Banks were hanging out last night to get his thoughts on how the Giant fans feeling. A uh, little baseball as well. Knicks. I, Jalen Brunson's, I mean, this. I, he is unbelievable. He is unbelievable. But we're rolling with this Jet situation for a little bit here on the fan, Tiki and Tierney. 